Hi everyone, and welcome back to a series I'm doing in complex and real analysis. Today I wanted to kind of take a step back from some of these more involved problems and show something that's a criterion for sequential convergence, which is useful in both real and complex analysis. Um, I first want to kind of prove this criterion for metric spaces, which shows how it's kind of immediately applicable. And the second thing I want to do is, is, is prove it more generally for topological spaces, since every metric space uh, is a topological space as well. Um, these these topological notions, if you're not familiar, might be kind of a, a little awkward at first, um, but it's worth looking them up. Some of these definitions, I, I promise, are really not too complex. And in fact, sequential convergence in topological spaces does make a lot of sense uh, in the more reasonable topological spaces, although, although there are some topological spaces uh, in which, you know, every sequence converges to every point or something like that. Um, but we won't worry about those. We'll just pretend that we're dealing uh, with, you know, a nice, uh, friendly topology. So anyway, let's take a look at this general criterion. Um, so the f I'm going to state it as a lemma. And like I said, I'm going to work first in metric spaces. So this metric space is XD, a tuple, where, you know, X is the set containing the points that we're concerned with. And D is the metric itself that pertains to the metric space. We put a point in X. We call it little x. And we have some sequence also in X. Okay, fair enough. And then we want to know when Xn converges to X, the age-old question, right? So we say that this happens if and only if for every subsequence of Xn, say, you know, Xnk, there exists a further subsequence, say Xnkm, kind of messy now, which also converges to X. So let's, let's kind of write this out in, in example format so maybe this makes a little more sense. So say we have our sequence, you know, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, x7, and so on. And basically what I'm saying is if I can take any subsequence, let's say, you know, the even uh, indices of our original sequence, and I can find a further subsequence, say, uh, you know, powers of 2, 2, 4, and then 8, and then 16 out way out there, and so on. If I can find a further subsequence which converges to x for any given subsequence, then the original sequence, the green dots, converge to x. Okay, so that's a pretty interesting criterion. It, it might be helpful, and in fact, I'm going to be making a video in a little bit which shows uh, exactly where you might use this uh, criterion in a problem in uh, uh, real analysis. Um, but let's take a look at how we would prove this. So I've already, you know, kind of written out a, a real s sly sketch there. As you can see, the forward direction is true. And hopefully I don't need to convince you too much of that. So, right, so if we already have Xn converging to X, then all that means is, uh, you know, any subsequence is also going to converge. So to construct a further subsequence, all you would have to do is just choose the subsequence that you're, you've already set yourself in and you're good. So there's really nothing to show in the forward direction. The backward direction is kind of where it gets tricky. Um, and how I will do that is actually to do it, uh, some people might say, you know, you could do it by proof by contradiction, but really it's it's more of a proof by contrapositive. So namely, the backward direction is really just, you know, I want to prove not the forward direction implies not the the, the last part, right? So I said by, by contrapositive. In other words, let's assume Xn does not converge to X. Okay. Well, what does that mean? Just by looking at the definition of convergence in a metric space, that really means that there exists some positive number epsilon greater than zero such that um, for all natural numbers n, there exists a further little n such that the distance in our metric from xn, little n, to x is larger than epsilon, which is again a positive distance. So we can't get, in other words, arbitrarily close to our x at every given point, which is uh, past, past, a, past a threshold, which is what we're trying to do in convergence. So that's an issue. So now the idea is to kind of construct some really horrible subsequence xnk of xn such that whatever further subsequence we choose, uh, it's not going to converge to x. And the trick to doing that is really to look at this, just this definition above. So let's pick the smallest n, uh, the smallest uh, n 
greater than one, you know, doesn't really matter, such that the distance between our xn and x is at least epsilon. So we can do that by our definition above, right? This definition here. And then all we have to do is inductively choose nk such that, you know, nk is larger than uh, the previous term because we're choosing inductively. Uh, and again, our distance is still greater than epsilon. So in other words, I, I pick my first term such that I'm epsilon away. I can do that by this same uh, not converging property up here. And then I pick my following terms such that uh, they don't get close either. Um, and we can just keep doing that and keep doing that. And that shows that we have a, a sequence that is never going to converge. And in fact, every term in the sequence, because of the way we've chose it, chosen it, is always epsilon away from x. So in fact, any further subsequence that you choose will never converge either. And therefore, we've proven this uh, by contrapositive. Now, I just kind of want to show you also the more general version, uh, which is also true, because every metric space is a topological space, but it's not the other way around. So this is, in fact, more general. So we have some topological space, and now instead of a metric, we have a topology. It's usually written like tau, and again, a set x. Uh, we put x and x, and again, we have the sequence, and now we basically restate the entire lemma, right? We have this convergence, if and only if these subsequences do this thing. So the forward direction is, again, pretty true. And the backward direction, we're going to do kind of a similar thing. And all we would do is basically say there exists U, which is a neighborhood of X. So it's in the topology. It's in tau such that, and again, we write out kind of our definition of convergence for all uh, natural numbers, capital N, there exists a little n which is larger, such that x little n is not in u. So in other words, if, if above, you know, we're kind of looking at the open balls, say maybe we're working on the Cartesian uh, plane, you know, R2, we're working on the plane, and we're, and we're kind of staying away from that uh, epsilon ball region, here, it's just any arbitrary neighborhood. So, you know, X could be this point here and U could be, you know, some horrible, weird neighborhood there. But the point is, is that we can always find points which are outside of that U, regardless of how far along we are in our sequence. And so I'll challenge you, can you come up with a way now to translate this proof in the metric space version to a proof in the topological sense? Um, so yeah, that's it.